Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. Today is January the 2nd of 2024. I wanted to talk about my plans for the stuff I carved. Well, let me show you. I had some leftover paper from another project and I decided that I would stamp every one of the things that I made for Carve December. Okay, so each day has a stamped image. Uh, they're all in black, black ink. Some of them like day, what is it? Day 17 has four or five stamps. All the ones that were done on the same day. I did give each stamp its own card. So some days have two or three, some have four. All right, so that's that. But <laughs> the side effect of doing the Carve December is a good thing is I finally finished this book from two, that I started in, I think this says 2000, October in 2017. So I get to start a new book this year, this for Carve December and December of 2024. I'm going to do a new book because <laughs> I had to eke in the last three carvings, 29, 30, and 31, on the book board because there wasn't any more room. So here are the ones that I glued in and saved. And I wanted to show, <clears throat> excuse me, the beginnings of the carving. Like if I did it on paper, I put that in there. Some of them I just drew right on the rubber. So there is, um, there's nothing to show. Some of them I actually put the jelly print in. I think I did last year, I put the jelly print in after I carved it, I showed what the jelly print looked like. I'm going to do that this year, but I'm going to do it in a different way. This <laughs> generated a lot of paper. Now, some of this is the roll-off paper that I am going to hang on to. Some of it's like, you know, the stamp stuff that I didn't put in the book, but I'm going to hang on to it until I do this project. All right, here we go. So what I'm thinking is... Uh, let's see, where are my little, my little guys? I want to try to find all the beginnings in here, but it looks like this is the last part of it. Oh, where are the gnomes? Okay, I don't know where they are. All right, so what I'm going to do, I think I have another pile of paper in a drawer. Um, so what I'm thinking is, I'd like to make a miniature book. Of course. Of course. But I'm going to do this one where it's so where I sew in individual pages. Oh, uh, let's see what is it called? I can't remember. When I do it, I'll tell you what it's called, but I've made one before. It's a little weird because it's a Coptic for single single pages, and I've made one once before. So that's what I'm going to do with these. But the twist is, I'm going to take, let's see, let me do this one because I can see the paper right here in front of me. So what I'm planning on doing is taking the same square as this and making it the same size as this, and I'm going to glue it onto the back of these so that I have the black stamped image then I have the jelly print of it. And I'll just, like, I've done one, two, three, four, four of these papers in different colors. And I'll just pick one color that I really like. And I will cut the square off of it, glue it onto the back of this so that when I make my little book, this will be one side and then what the jelly print looks like will be on the back side. I think that would be a nice little book. And then I'll put a hard cover on it. And of course the cover will be made out of a jelly print from one of these 
one of these things here. I might use this one because I think I like these the best. So I saved all the jelly paper that I did in the videos. It's all right here. Well, plus a small stack in a drawer somewhere. So I'm looking at these and I'm thinking that these would make a nice page on the back of the brown ones because they're all about the same size. So that is my project to work on today. And let's get to it. It took me about an hour and a half to do the last stage since I turned the camera off, which was to print uh, or cut out the color portions, and I'm missing one, color out the, cut out the color portions, and I also had to stamp, ru rubber stamp, I also had to do jelly prints for number day number one, number two, and I think there's, yeah, the, the gnomes from day four. I didn't think ahead when I did those that I would be doing any of this. Where is day number four's gnome? Or maybe he wasn't number four. Could have sworn he was. Well, anyway. So I got all of them stamped and put together. They all have the color thing except for this one. And I will have to go look for that one. Um, so the next part will be to find uh, a hard cover for this and cover it. Then I will poke holes, and I think because this is going to be the single page Coptic, that I, I'm only going to do, I'm going to do three needles. I had done the single page Coptic in a previous video where I did five. Should have your head examined if you do five. <laughs> five is way too many. So I'll either do I probably will do three on this, and it will interfere on some of these. Uh, there's just, you know, this was not, it's just the way it's going to be. There's going to be holes in these, and I'm not going to put, uh, I don't think I'm going to put eyelets in it, so I don't want there to be even bigger wonky holes in this than what's necessary. This book will not be something that's open and closed on a regular basis. I might drag it out once a year to do Carve December in the future just to do it you know, just to look at it. But other than that, it's just going to sit on a shelf and collect lots of dust. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's see. I had to do jelly for this, 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 and this because I did not do jellies in the beginning because I had no intentions of doing it. And then I forgot that I had done them last year like that and I really liked it. So these four, I had to go ahead and make prints for today. Let me show you the prints. One, two, three, four. Where's the fourth one? Okay, so they're not in numerical order. Well, actually, this was the day one. Here's day one for this guy right here. That's this one right here. Uh, then I don't... What's day two? Is it the cat? Yes, day two is the cat. I did not cut out the cat off of this. Instead, I just printed it off of a piece of painted paper, stamped, because I didn't like the way this turned out especially. But this this is the only one that I thought was really good on here. But here's the cat stamp for that one. And then, let's see, this guy right here, I think I did... No, I only did one of him. All right, so here's this guy, and I cut out one at the bottom. There's him. And this guy got two because this was supposed to be purple and yellow, and it did not go so well. But I did use one of him. I did not break up this because I really like these, and I, I wasn't crazy about these three. But here's the, the dude go this way. Here he is right there. So there are those that I didn't start. And then I've got to look for 
one more paper that I did for another one in here, the one that didn't have anything on it. I've got to look for that paper. I know I, I have it somewhere, but I need to find it so that I can glue it on the back to make sure every one of these has something on the back of it. I didn't want to leave them undone. So this is the back. Well, here is the back side to them. This one is very hard to see. I didn't want to cut up the best ones because I needed to scan those. This goes this way, but he's too tall. Again, some of them were too tall for what those little pieces of paper are. And this one, I have the stamp for it. I just got to find the paper. So I guess I need that one out. So I remind myself I needs to be done. So this is carved December 2023. I'm so glad that I finished all of them and as soon as this is off of here, I'll feel a lot better about my desk. <laughs> I had it cleaned up. Oh, here's the other guy. How did he get on day? Oh, he's day 14. 14. Four. There's day four. And then this guy was too tall to do diagonally. So all I did was glue, uh, 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 that's going to be a big mess. See, look, it's already sticking. This paint sticks horribly, but there he is. Uh, oh, fooey. Anyway, so that's day one. So there they all are. And as soon as I clean all this rigmarole off the desk, and get this one fixed, I'm going to come back and I'm going to sew the book together. Well, actually, I'm going to cover the book. Look for miscellaneous chipboard. Then I'm going to cover the book and poke the holes. Then I'm going to sew it. And I need three needles to sew it because each line of it is sewn individually with the Coptic stitch. It's not um, contiguous doing the others. You do one set, one set, one set. All right, I'll come back and show you when I get everything together. While I was cleaning off the table, I went ahead and scanned the um, sunflower uh, stamp in the different three the three colors I like the best. This one was red and yellow, and it looks pink. And I don't know what the other color is. It just looks pink. I don't particularly like that. The yellow and the brown looks good, and then the green looks good, but it's not bright enough. Not only that, but on every one of these prints, there's a black dot on all three of the prints in the same spot. I don't know what is going on, but it looks like the black ink is uh, dripping or leaving marks or something. So when I use these papers, I'm going to be mindful of the black spots. I dug around in the chipboard area basket and found this from I'm sure it's a watercolor you know whatever kind of cover I always save them because they're really good they're they're nice and firm they're not too fat they're not too skinny and not like a cereal box let's put it that way a little more girth all right so I did redo this one with the second one cut out the second one and glued it on top of the first one and I'm not going to put this down yet till it really, really dries because I don't want it to stick again. So what I need to do now is to measure overall what the size is. So it's a two, probably a two and a quarter. Let's get some paper. 
two and a fourth. The width is, let me, oh, well, I could do centimeters. Five, six centimeters. Yeah, because some of these are a little wider than others. So let's do, I could make my board six centimeters. Six, whoops, six centimeters. And then the height, I can make just another six, six centimeters. So I'll do um, six by six centimeters, which in inches is one, two and a quarter. So that's two and a fourth by two and a fourth. Then I'll go ahead and cut this and I'll be back. I ended up deciding to switch to this board here because the other one was not, this does not cut it straight. And I thought I got it straight because I put pressure on it. It did not cut the stuff straight. And I decided that doing a six by six is the way I'm gonna go. Even though the overhang on one side is a lot, I decided I will leave it that way. So I'm gonna go by um, using a square. Even though these papers are not exactly square, I'll do six centimeters by six centimeters. And I'm gonna cut these by hand because the other ones did not go well, <laughs> which was totally my fault. So I'm gonna cut these and then I will come back and cover them. I use this um, thing from, I think it's We Are Memory Keepers, this book binding template thingy. I don't know what they call it. Anyway, I use this to space out my circles, circles, space out my holes. The only problem is, is that it was too far away from the edge. The hole would have been like way over here and I didn't want it that far into it because I'd be poking a hole through a lot of things I glued on here already. A lot of glue, things I glued. So what I did was I took this and I poked three holes. And when I did it, I did it in the book, the back of the book. And then I'll take this. It's starting to warp a little bit because it's wet. I'll take this and I'll repoke the holes for the for the book. And then I have to do all the holes. I've done these so far. I have to do each page individually to make sure they line up perfectly with the template I have here, which is another page. So it's slow going. So I'll be back as soon as I finish. My big plan was to show you how I was going to sew this book together, but nothing I have tried has gone right. <laughs> I think I showed in a previous video that I was using green wax linen that was about this lime color. But I kept ripping holes in the sides. First of all, this, the holes are poked. The holes are poked too close to the edge of the paper. Mistake number one. Now, first, first mistake number one was not planning in advance. This was an afterthought. Mistake number two <laughs> was poking the holes too close to the edge. Mistake number three was using the wax linen, which is requires a larger eyed needle which rips a hole <laughs> in the paper. So I had to pull out the three pages that I finished. You have to dangle these over the edge of the table. It makes it so much easier to put the book together. Only problem is, is I cannot film me doing that. All you see is this pile. You don't see this. 
that I'm sewing. So I had to go back and find regular thread, like sewing thread, and then I had to look for three sewing needles. So I threaded, it's so hard to see it, sorry. Um, I threaded little teeny eye needles, and I'm starting all over again. <laughs> because I had ripped holes in the first three pages that I sewed, I went back and took this so you could see through it and put um, a piece of tape like half over one side, folded it over to the other, and then went back with my um, pokey tool and poked the holes in the in the holes where I could see that they had been poked in the past. I don't know, can you see it shiny? Yeah, there you go. So all of them are in a stack and when you look at them, <laughs> my ends look very nice and shiny. That's because they are, <laughs> because the light is reflecting on the cellophane tape. Now I already ripped a hole in the cellophane tape trying to do the um, trying to sew it with the wax linen. I just thought that taping the holes would take care of that problem. No! So this has been a three hour episode this morning. <laughs> I still have not got one page sewn in. Trying to spend all my time fixing all my ill thought out project ideas. <laughs> so I do have <laughs> all the threads through the cover and I did manage to sew in one of these but then I had to stop because when you dangle these like on towards the floor and then pick them up and put them down and dangle, then my needle fell off the thread and that was 10 minutes with the flashlight looking for it on the floor. So do as I say not as I have done. Yeah, that's it. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> Go find yourself. I will link something. A good Lark's Head tutorial where you know you're going to do that kind of sewing for a single page up front. Like if I had really given this more thought, proper thought, I would have made these three by three squares and then saved a half an inch in from the edge to do the sewing in the book. That way I wasn't going to hopefully rip a big hole in it and I've done that in a couple of these that I've had to tape two and three times. Cause I, and then I got rid of the wax linen, had to pull all that out and those big fat eyed needles for the wax linen. So that was a bad idea. Any other time the wax linen with, you know, larger stuff is okay. But the holes are too small for the needle and it took a little bit of tugging. Then I ripped, ripped it. <laughs> Not once, but four times. Okay, so I do everything the hard way. <laughs> it's for your entertainment. Alrighty, so this is what I've got so far. I've got, you have to do I only poke three holes in this because it's a small book. And you put your thread through and then you start doing the Coptic stitch on each page one hole at a time. So I did calculations on the calculator. I'm thinking, oh, that's not so bad. And I thought, oh, wait, I can't sew like all the first holes, all this. No, you have to go back and forth and do them individually. So. <laughs> I multiplied three holes times 31. That comes out to 93 times I have to do this. Now, ordinarily, I would have the patience to try to set up something so you can see it, but my tripod didn't work. I've ripped holes in it, did the wrong, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on. So I'm just going to sew the book, and when I'm done, which might be a month from now, I will come back and I will show you what it looks like. I think this will go much better in the respect that I can get the needle through the hole. What's going to be annoying is splitting this thread when you have to go through it because you have to like go through the thread. Let me see if I can find it. You have to split this every single time to go through it for the next page. Only problem is, is number one, it's hard to see. And number two, sometimes thread does not cooperate and then you get knots and tangles and blah, blah, blah. And, I find that rather annoying because this is why I don't sew. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm going to sew a few of these pages and I'll come, whoops, here we go. Tangle, tangle, tangle. I will come back and I will show you what I've accomplished. Hopefully there will be no tears or swear words in any of this project. 
I'm going to watch TV. Well, listen to TV while I do this. Maybe it will calm the savage beast in me while I sew. <laughs> I'll be back and show you what I've done in a few minutes. I said before in the other segment that I would come back and show you my progress. And I got caught up <laughs> in the whole project and forgot that I need to show you. But this is how far I've come. Uh, let's see, how many more pages do I have left? I am more than two-thirds of the way done. Well, I'm probably about three-fourths of the way done. How many do I have left? There are 31 pages, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight pages left to sew in. And then I have to watch the video on how to sew on the cover, and this little bad baby will be done. Yay! Okay, so I learned a lot from this that my choices need to be made in advance and not off the cuff, especially when the holes are poked too close to the edge. That was probably the crucial error that I made was doing the um, holes too close to the edge. Thank goodness for scotch tape and then, you know, undoing some stuff and trying to fix my mistakes, <laughs> putting it nicely. This is the thread I'm using. This is sewing machine thread from, was it Threads Up? Is that what the name of the place? Did they have a catalog? Threads Up, Thread Count, I don't know, I don't remember. Anyway, I bought a whole bunch of these years ago and I have never used them, but now since I've been sewing books more often, I use this on um, junk journal sewing paper and stuff like that. And then it comes in handy for when I make a, a um, faux pas with sewing the wax stuff. So I'll be back whenever I get the cover on. Okay, so the book is finished. And this is my second time to record the ending because I forgot how bad my thumb looked. I had a hangnail and I pulled it and it pulled all the skin from all the way around. It was all red. And when I was watching the replay, I was like, oh, uh, my thumb. I forgot I had taken the Band-Aid off so it could air out a little bit. I should have put it back on before I recorded. Nevertheless. Uh, so, <laughs> this book was wrought with silly issues of my own making. Uh, it's been a long time since I've sewn the Lark's, Lark's Head Binding. I love the idea that you can do a Coptic binding for one sheet, but I don't think they meant for you to do 31. <laughs> so... All right, so that's the first one. Second one was, is, that I never intended to make a book. I, I, well, I intended to make a book, but when I did that, I forgot that I should have left allowance on the side so that when I sewed it, it wasn't like an eighth of an inch from the edge, which is probably somewhere in that, in that range. You need a fourth to half an inch or more. Um, and I did not allow enough, so that's why it kept ripping. The first time when I did it, I did it with the wax linen. The needle head was too large, and that's why it was ripping the paper. Plus, it was too close to the edge, so when I pulled on it, it ripped it through the edge. So I got rid of, I picked out the pages, got rid of the linen thread. Then I decided that it needed some support so I took the scotch tape and I ran it down the edge of every page repoked the holes started over and realized that that um, wax linen was too large for this small of a project so I went to regular sewing thread which if you have seeing problems or you don't have enough lighting bad idea <laughs> so I sewed it with that I'm and so it's very loosey-goosey um the next thing, <laughs> the next mistake I made was such a rookie thing. I can't believe I did this, but I sewed them in backwards. <laughs> so day 31, <laughs> and day 30, and then we go through all of them, and guess what the last one is? Day number one. <laughs> I was so worried about making sure the front and back covers were were good that I forgot to flip I forgot to flip the um, pictures. 
so that day one would be sewn in, so on and so forth in numerical order that way. And guess, I just, everything's backwards, but nevertheless, I'm still happy with my book. It needs, um, it, it's rather thick here if you look at it or you squeeze it together. You see how it's thicker here? That's because of all the scotch tape on the 31 pages. I don't think Lark's Head's really meant to do this many pages. <laughs> I think it's meant, well, the demo that I watched only had like four things in it. Or five things, or ten, something like that, but not 31. So next time I make book, this year if I do Carve December again, what I will do is I will use the regular Coptic stitch and just make sure that if I do paper, that it's they're folded, you know, they're the halves, so that I don't run into the same problem. And I know when I do the other Coptic, I do a minimum of a fourth of an inch from the edge. So I will probably do a fourth to half an inch, probably half an inch. Um, and that will help the ripping factor and finding some other thread. I need to find a happy medium between this and the um, wax linen thread because that's really too thick that for this, it probably, the paper should have been maybe watercolor for that strength of wax linen. Watercolor paper would, that would be more appropriate. This is too tiny for this kind of paper, but it's okay because I'm not gonna be opening and closing this a lot, except for, you know, to film and show it. Um, it'll go sit on a shelf with all the other books and that'll be the end of it. I won't be dragging it out to look at it. Maybe once in a while to look at it for a stamp reference. But for the most part, it will just sit on a shelf and look cute. So that is it for the Lark's Head Binding on 31 sheets of Strathmore Tone Tan Paper. That has the stamp and then it has the jelly print, corresponding print, on the back side of all of them. So it was a great project. I will get better <laughs> for next time because I will pull this up and refresh my memory <laughs> and all the mistakes I made with this one. So hopefully I'll learn from this <laughs> and I won't do it again. Please don't hold your breath out there because you might turn blue. <laughs> Alright guys, I do appreciate you watching. I understand if you have to fast forward because it's kind of long video. I don't usually do long videos because I do not have high speed internet. So I have to upload them like at midnight and then get up at 3 a.m. to check it. Yeah, I live in that kind of community. So um, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Even if you have to fast forward through some of the silliness, I really do appreciate it. And I'm sorry that the last couple um, segments were with my ugly looking thumb. This looks much better with a Band-Aid. So thank you very much, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.